Well, greetings. Thank you for being with us. Um, my name is Brenda Hoffer. I'm with Greater Mission Ministries, one of the ministers there, and I wanted to welcome you today. And, um, you know, during this vacation season, one of the things that I was thinking about, you know, it's a privilege to have the last Sunday of the month. And um, when I was talking to God about what we were going to talk about today, one of the things that he impressed on me was um, the importance of relationship. And so today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about making a place at your table for him. So I'd like to start by uh, having prayer. So if you'll bow your heads with me or pray uh, however you want. But Lord, I just thank you for today. I thank you for keeping us safe through the year 2020. I know a lot of people are looking forward to 2021 because of all the hiccups in 2020. But um, I'm so grateful and thankful that you're still on the throne, that you know what's going on, that you orchestrate our comings and goings. And that you have everything under control and we just need to rest in you. So I just ask that uh, as you continue to give me words, I ask that they would just minister the hearts and lives of the people that hear it. That you would bring people to this place to, to listen to it so that it can edify them, build them up, and help them uh, have a better walk with you, God. In Jesus' name. So uh, the scripture that I'm, I'm bringing this from is Revelations 3.20. And the King James Version says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. And when I found that scripture, one of the things that um, first was impressed on my heart is a lot of time in the church, we talk about the knocking on the door and we talk about letting him in as our salvation experience, but we don't continue with the verse, you know, and it's good that we hear his voice and it's good that we open the door to him. But it says, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. And I think sometimes we forget that, that God really wants a relationship with us. In fact, the whole purpose of this Christmas season was, was sending his son to bridge that gap between us and him. You know, in the Old Testament, they had to use sacrifice to atone for their sins so they could commune with God. But it was short-lived. You know, in, in days, maybe weeks, maybe minutes, they were already sinning again and already had a distance from God. And so God wanted a plan that would allow us the privilege and the honor of being in fellowship with him and having a relationship with him all the time. And, and so he came and he died on the cross and he shed his blood so that we could have that forgiveness of sins. That we wouldn't have to go out and, and have an alternative blood source to cover the, the, the sin in our lives and the things that are wrong in our lives. But it goes a step further. Once we let him into our heart, he wants to come in and dine with us. And I was sitting at our table at, at my home. I'm, I'm not at home now. I, I love vacation. I, I like to travel and see the things around the world. And uh, right now, our focus has been around the U.S. But when I was sitting at my table, I noticed all the clutter on our table. And we've got two teenagers, and everybody's at home. I'm teaching at home. The kids are doing school at home. Everybody's at home, in the home, around the home, in the home. I think you understand for those of you that have kids. And, and I just noticed the amount of clutter on the table. And even dining on my own, I'm having to clear away my daughter's artwork, and I'm having to put away, you know, some of the fruit that's in the middle of the table and people laying their sweatshirts down and whatever else, my own mess. And... And it's a constant chore to just keep a spot clean for me to sit and have a coffee, you know, in the morning when I get up and, and have my quiet time. And a lot of times, you know, we don't realize how many things we have in the way that keep us from being able to fellowship him. Because he's there ready to fellowship us. But, but we let the clutter of the world get in the way. And so the Lord started talking to me about making pla a place at my table for him. And I started thinking about what that that meant. And and it means, you know, if if you're having company, normally during the holiday seasons, you know, it's a it's a time of festivities, it's a time of parties, and we invite people over, and when we invite them over, we set the table, we put out plates, we put things away, we clean the house, we dust, we mop, we vacuum, you know, we do all those things to make a place for our friends to come and visit. And yet, how much more should we be doing that for him? so that we have a place to fellowship him. You know, with COVID, one of the things that I really miss is just going to the coffee shop and hanging out with my friends and having a cup of coffee or meeting somebody for lunch and that fellowship that can happen across the table. 
And when I was looking up about, um, about the benefits of dining with friends, uh, several websites and studies have shown that, you know, it gives you positive emotions, well-being. It um, allows you to have meaningful time, that breaking of the bread, strengthening community. And, and who more do we need to strengthen that community tie with than, than our Lord? And, you know, God wants to bless us. God wants to have a place in our life. He wants his best for us all the time. And yet we let the distractions of this world keep us from, from seeing his best, from receiving his best. And so with, with 2021 coming up, and I know a lot of people come up with New Year's resolutions about losing weight, exercises, and whatever else. But I think the, the most important thing that we could do is to start thinking about how we can start spending time with him. How can we fellowship him? Because, you know, pastor says that the only problem we have is a wisdom problem. And how much better are we going to be in this new season when we have his ear in our circumstances? You know, and so cleaning the table. So we're not worrying about the bills. That's one of the things that gets scattered on my table is the mail. We're not worried about whether or not we're eating. We're not worried about our job. You know, and right now a lot of people are putting a lot of their eggs in a basket for, for the government to help them, whether it's some kind of subsidy program or some kind of leadership, you know, and, and neither Biden nor Trump have, have the capacity to, to rule your life. You know, you have decisions over your own life and Christ wants to bring abundance to it. And we shouldn't be relying on our job and we shouldn't be relying on the government to, to meet our needs because he said he would meet our needs and be there for us. You know, in Psalms uh, 50 verse 10 it says that he has a cattle on a thousand hills you know and, and talking about the wealth and the abundance of God and other scriptures talk about how he'll take the wealth from from the enemy and and deliver it to us and I, I can't tell you how many times I've been in a place of need and God has brought somebody across my path to either give me a job or to make provision for me to have food or or to put cash in my hand so that my needs are met but it starts at that table. It starts by taking the time to, to clear away the earth's distractions and fellowshipping him. Much like you would be if you invited somebody over to your home and poured them a cup of coffee. You know, that intimate visiting time. And, you know, it doesn't have to be, it can be something simple. Like, God, these are the things that are going on in my day. You know, pour your heart out to him with the little things and watch how he... He continues to bring joy in your life and peace in your life and gives you divine ideas about things that need to be done. Um, when I was uh, first teaching overseas, I had $35,000 in college debt. And, and this was, you know, close to almost 30 years ago now. So $35,000 was a, even more money back then compared to now. And I had no clue how to deal with this debt. And I just started a teaching position on Saipan and I couldn't afford to travel. And I was stuck there on the summer during the summer, and I just I just went to the Lord and said, you know what, God, I know I went to the school you told me to go to. I know that, that you put all these things together, and now I have this debt, and I need your divine provision in, in this situation. And you know what, he gave me a divine idea about tutoring kids, and I, I made, you know, several thousand dollars working a couple hours a day for six to eight weeks, but it was that divine idea that was a catalyst to paying back that debt and giving me an opportunity to have financial freedom with that. And, and I know that those of you that are dealing with things, if you'll just take the time to quiet yourself and not worry about what the world's answers are and ask him what his direction is for your life, that you're going to be surprised by the ideas that come to you. You're going to be surprised by the peace, by the joy, because that's what he wants for your life. And so many times we let the world come in with the bills and the distractions and our kids and what our kids are doing or not doing. And, and we let the enemy come in and take our peace. And we let the enemy come in and take our joy. But that's not what God wants for us. And uh, one of the things that when I read scripture, I, I look for the verbs. You know, and it says, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, we had to actively do something to let him into our lives in the beginning. But the action doesn't stop. It says, I will come in and dine with him and he, he with me. When you're dining with someone and, and being in a place of service, there's still preparation there. 
And, and that's where, you know, quieting your heart comes in. That's where, you know, telling the Lord, you know, I'm not going to worry about these bills. I'm not going to worry about these situations because I know you have my needs met. It says, when you're dining, when I went on the web, it says, when you're dining, be present and engaged. And when you do that, you have a sense of belonging. You know, and a lot of times we pray our prayers and then we're, we're off doing whatever we want to do, but we're not present and engaged. And if you really want to hear God and find out what he has for you in this new year, and this new season, we need to be present and have a sense of belonging because we do belong to him. And we need to know that what he has in store for us is better than anything that we could plan on our own. So think about the pre preparation that we do when we have someone over. We think about the care that we have in making a place. And I just uh, challenge you to think about what it will take to make a place at your table, a place in your heart to fellowship him this year and make him a priority in your life and, and see what kind of changes come about and how God not only directs your path and directs your words, how he uh, promotes you in your workplace and gives you favor. You know, my, my friends are constantly amazed at all the things uh, that have, have happened in my life because of favor. And I, um, I have this running joke with my stepdad about who's, who's God's favorite. And when things happen, you know, I'm the first one to call him and say, guess what? You know, guess what God has done for me? You know, and, and the great thing about God is that he has such a huge supply that his favoritism towards me does not diminish his favoritism towards you. And so start changing that mindset and understand that you're beloved, that you're God's favorite, that he loves you, that he has a wonderful life put together for you, that he wants peace and prosperity to be part of your life, that he wants you to walk in peace and joy and and by communing with him and dining with him and, and having that relationship with him, you know, is, is the greatest gift you can give to him and also to yourself. Um, I've been watching all these Christmas specials here over the holidays. And one of the things that, that I see is you see all these people dressed up and, and taking these prominent positions in the pulpit or, or in song. And, and watching them be blessed with that gift and talent is amazing. But, you know... The gifts and talents he's given you and the things he wants to do in your life are no less special and no less diminishing than, than those that you see on the TV. And I think sometimes we long for things that we're not ready for and we're not gifted for. And um, being present at the table and having that fellowship with him is going to start giving you insight to, to the gifts and talents he's given you and the place and role that he has for you. Because when we're called to walk, we're called to walk in obedience to our own call. Our supplies are already there for our own call. And when we're doing the things that he's called us to do, that's when we're ex you know, blessed. That's when we have joy. That's when we have peace. And that's when all the things fall in place. So I just want to encourage you this new year to count him faithful to spend time with him, to invest in that relationship with him at that table, to clear out the, the worldly concerns, clear out the, the, the distractions and the things that might take you away from him and the time away from him and watch him work in your life. So God bless you. Have a wonderful uh, holiday season, a marvelous new year. And I just want to put a blessing on you. God, I just thank you for the faith that you've given me to stand and hold you faithful. And Lord, I ask that that same level of faith be given to, uh, to each and every person that's listening, that they will have faith to believe that you have the best out for them, that they will have faith to believe that you'll make all the crooked places straight, that they have faith to believe that you'll bring loved ones into the kingdom, that they have faith to believe for, uh, for their job situation and to have advancement, that they'll have faith to believe that you will keep them in good health, that they have faith to believe that their joy will be full and there will be peace yes. in their home. That they will have faith to believe that you love them so much that you sent your son to die for them as an individual. Not for all mankind, but you love them enough that you sent your son even for them. That one individual, God. And I just ask that you would, you would just make your presence known so they would know how important they are to you and how much you love them. And how much you want to bless them. And Lord, I, I ask that they would have faith to lay down their own cares to take up your causes 
and, and to get on the track that you would have for them so that all the provisions that you have would be laid before them at the right time in the right season to, to bring glory to your son and yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So God bless you. Have a wonderful new year. Uh, the Hoffert family sends their greetings, and uh, we love you. God bless. If you want to give, you can do it on BevMo. I know Micah's going to put the information on the bottom of the screen there. It's also on uh, the website. And um, and uh, you can look up Greater Mission Ministries also. They have a Facebook page and other ways uh, to contact Pastor Michael Weeks, the senior pastor. Um, and then also their P.O. Box 395, San Miguel, California, 93451, if you want to write a check. So thank you so much for being faithful to the ministry, and God bless.